one thing that new techs always do is they come up to me and they're like, Mike, what kind of tools do I need to be a great network technician? And the answer is, I would say 90% of the problems that you run into on networks can be handled with two tools that are built into, well, not only Windows, but pretty much every operating system, more or less. And that is ping, and in Windows, it's called ipconfig. Now, these two tools alone will take care of so many different things. Let's make sure you know how to use them. So let's start off with ping. So ping, so to use ping, you just type in ping, and then the name of another computer that you want to ping. So I'm going to ping, oop, let's type it right. So I'm gonna ping one particular computer here. What ping does is that it sends out one little packet out to whatever address you've put in there, and then that device will respond back. So it's a really great way to say, am I connected to this thing? Are we on the same network ID? Are, are we working together at least at the TCP IP level? So it works out pretty nice like that, and it's a tool we turn to over and over again. If you can't ping somebody, odds are good you're not gonna be able to open up their web server or whatever else it might be. There are some limitations, we'll talk about that. So let's take a look at this output. In Windows, when you ping something, you get four responses back. So in this case, there are my four. Now, there are situations where you might want to keep on pinging. In other words, just keep pinging until I say otherwise. So we're gonna type it in again. Notice I put in a minus T this time. So let's watch the ping go. Eh, there's five, there's six. This is just going to keep going until I turn it off. A lot of times if I'm diagnosing something, I'll have one person ping a system while I'm working on that system to see what goes on or off. Plus it's a great way you can unplug the remote system and keep plugging it back in and you'll get all kinds of fun stuff that way too. So within the Windows environment, if you want to keep on pinging, use that minus T option. By the way, in other operating systems, by default, that's exactly how ping works. Now in Windows, we keep on pinging, so if we want to stop this, I'm going to hit Control C. So if you want to connect to somebody, you use ping. Now keep in mind, normally when we're using ping, we're using it within our local area network. We'll talk about using ping outside of that in a moment, but for right now, ping is in close, just for the local area network. In general, there are problems trying to ping somebody far, far away. If you have a problem connecting to somebody, the first thing you should do is always check yourself. So I'm gonna type in ipconfig. By typing ipconfig, I can verify, do I have a legitimate IP address? Is my default gateway set up properly? So if you're worried about yourself, you type ipconfig. Now, if you're worried about someone else, then you ping them. So I type ipconfig right here, and you'll see that I have a 192.168.4.54 address. Let's go with a com very common situation. I can't get on the internet. In this situation, we'll say that I do have a good IP address for my network ID, but I still can't get on the internet. So one of the very most common things we do is we ping the router. So I'm gonna do it one more time. The reason I know it's my router is because my default gateway setting is 192.168.4.1, so I'm gonna ping 192.168.4.1. And I know that if I'm hitting my router, there is some other issue involved other than I know my cables are correct, I know I've got TCP IP installed, I know I've got the right network ID installed. So there's somewhere else to look. And that's where IP config and ping can work really, really well together. Now, speaking of IP config, although we do see IP config in other episodes, here's one more little option I wanna throw on top of that. I'm gonna type IP config, but this time I'm gonna add another switch. Notice I'm putting in the word all. So now when I type IP config slash all, it gives me a lot more information. In particular, I can see things, for example, here where it says physical address, that's my MAC address. If I have DNS information, I can see it here. Here's my DHCP server. So if my DHCP server isn't my router, well, here's a great example where we can see something like that. So make sure you know how to use these two tools together. Ping and ipconfig are gonna cover 90% of the problems you're gonna run into in typical networks. 
Wait, 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 wait. There's one more thing I want to talk about when it comes to ping. Now, remember I said ping is really used for really local area connections, up close type of connections. Generally, we don't like using ping, trying to ping things really, really far away. The reason is simple. A lot of devices have firewalling that prevents pings from being responded to. It's very common for web servers and all kinds of stuff to simply not respond to pings. More than that, a lot of routers, especially home routers, can be configured not to respond to pings. So when you're on the big internet, ping may or may not work, but even if it doesn't, it can do some cool things. Let me show you some examples. First of all, there is a particular system that I want to ping called 8.8.8.8. .8 Check the DNS episode to see why that's an important one. If I ping that guy, you'll see that I get a response. So you would say, well, Mike, there's an example where ping worked just fine. Well, there's plenty of examples where ping doesn't work. However, some cool things can happen. Let me show you this. So I'm going to type in ping, and I'm going to type in uh, So hub.totalsend.com. So it's going to be doing all kinds of stuff. I know, because I'm actually in control of that server, that it's designed not to respond to pings. But look what it's saying here. So it's telling me that the request is timed out, but look what it gives me. There's the IP address right there. So you can ping by name and simply get a response back telling you the IP address. So if you want to know the IP address for www.google.com or server1.warcraft.com or whatever server you want, you can use ping. Even though the ping fails, it will give you the IP address.